Hey friends, Paul here. I'd like to offer some tips on how to get a basic crystal radio set up and running. Some tips I've learned along the way, including selecting the proper diode, very important, variable capacitor, winding your own coil, um, as well as the antenna for a tight space like an apartment where I live. So let's take a closer look. First, you're going to need a set of high impedance headphones like these made in Japan old stock headphones. I picked these up on eBay. Um, you're going to need that if you don't have a powered speaker. But for the sake of this video, uh, I'm using the output here going into a Bose powered speaker here. Battery 80%. And you can see I'm getting a good signal there. They're very, very sensitive. The same kind of headphones that are used on submarines in the mil for military applications. So that's the first thing you're going to need. Regular commercial headphones will not work. Second, the antenna is incredibly important. Now, I'm using about 10 feet of wire here in my apartment. That's all the space I can really afford in my studio apartment. Uh, 10 feet of wire. If you have a home with a backyard and say two big white pine trees running 50 to 100 feet apart, you're going to pick up way more stations than I can get and have greater selectivity using the wire I'm using for the antenna here is this 21 gauge uh, approximately. That, that will do just fine, 21 gauge wire. And that's, I believe, what I'm using up here. I'll show you the couple stations I can get here. This is the station I wanted to bring in. You can see I've got just about a third of using um, one gang of this variable capacitor here. Just one gang meaning this is one gang and this is another gang. So this is a two gang capacitor with a total capacitance of 495 picofarads. So I'm only using one gang, so I'm going to turn the radio off here for a second. I'm going to turn it down while I talk. So I'm only using one gang of this. So, you know, roughly dividing 495, 500 would be about 250 for one gang here. And I'm using probably about 83 picofarads here to pick up 970 AM on the AM dial. Now, what you will find with these a lot of times when you're looking for a variable capacitor are these two, two, three capacitors, but they don't, that's not uh, high enough capacitance for what you want. You really want to go with a solid metal, you know, new old stock or just a used capacitor. I did a homespun uh, dial here. This is actually a former Soviet Union USSR two gang capacitor. It's excellent. As you can see, I'm just connecting one wire there to one gang, and that's bringing me down to 970 AM on the AM band, kilohertz. The problem is, is due to the space, as I mentioned before, only having about 10 feet of wire strung up here, that's all I'm going to be able to pick up. As I try to tune this lower, because there's another station where I live that's in the 500s, and I'm going to turn up the volume here on my powered speaker, and as I go to, you can hear that I don't get anything past that 970 okay turn that up so you can hear it so I'll turn this up a little bit higher and I'll show you that that's really all I can get that's that's that station okay but it's not a different station so I really can't get more I can't get lower than 970 with my configuration due to the limitation of my antenna wire length. If I had 50 to 100 feet running, you know, having a backyard or something like that, or access to a space that could run such a longer wire, I would be able to further um, this, pro this hobby. But I, I just use, you know, what I have here. So at least I got that station in there on 970. And then I'll show you what happens when this is opened up all the way. The dominant station that I pick up, this is no capacitance now. 
And this is 1310. 1310 kilohertz, totally opened up. And then you can see adding that capacitance. Okay, I'm gonna cut the music and talk right there. I just wanted to demonstrate what happens when this is opened up all the way. I'm picking up the dominant AM station in my area, which is 1310, and applying about 85 picofarads, um, calculating the one gang, I'm getting as far down into the 900s, which is not bad. And so I have one lead coming out there. Um, junction, the junction is with a tap here in my homespun coil. And a tap, if you're new to this, I was kind of confused about that at first, but here's a demonstration of a tap. And what you do is when you're winding your wire, you want to make a twist in the wire. And then because we're using enameled wire, which is coated, which is copper wire coated with um, enamel. And you can see there that I've sanded away just the tip of that uh, tap there or loop in the coil. So that's what a tap means. And every 20 or so turns of wire, you want to make a tap. So for example, I've got a tap there, a tap here where you see the junction, and two more taps. But for that 970 uh, sweet spot, I found that second tap to work best. And that actually goes along with most instructions you'll find online. This is about 55 turns around about a 10 uh, millimeter graphite bar. That's what you want to go for, a graphite bar, a nice, beefy, fat graphite bar, and using a thinner enameled wire compared to the antenna. The antenna, I was, I'm using a 21-gauge wire. The wrapping I'm using on the coil is for the inductor coil is 28-gauge uh, enameled uh, magnet wire, and that's working just great. And that intersects with my antenna, right here. So here you can see the difference in diameter between the thicker antenna and then the thinner inductor coil wire. Now compare that, friends, to a professional, a professionally designed crystal radio set I picked up. And I'll, I'll put a link in the description to where I got this. You can see his inductor wire right there compared to mine. Now this is a great set. However, I'm not able to bring in that 970 frequency as good on this unit here, despite it having a good diode. We'll get to that in a minute. And look, check this out. Using a one of these kind of smaller, cheaper capacitors, I really do think that the beefy metal capacitor works better and seems to make a difference as the diode on his set um, is basically the same germanium diode that I'm using right here. The diodes we're talking about are the 1N34A. That's, that's what you want, a 1N34A germanium diode with a forward voltage of about 0.26 to 0.27 volts. Lower forward voltage is better with crystal radios because the voltage coming in from the antenna is so low, we want a low forward voltage. Now, when I first got into this hobby, you know, I'm always looking for budget values. I bought some Chinese germanium diodes off eBay, and it's the same forward voltage, about 0.26 to 0.27 uh, volts forward voltage, but you can see the difference in, in quality right here compared to the good one on the right compared to the cheapo on the left. And I could not, or I cannot get a crystal radio set working with the cheapo Chinese diode. So I went with some new old stock uh, 1N34A diodes, and that really just made all the difference. So the first thing you wanna do is really get a good diode. Another diode that's good for crystal radio is the 0A47 diode. However, it has a slightly higher forward voltage. So I found that the 1N34A is really where 
the best performances, although the 0A47 is also good. Either way, both of them are good and are going to give you good performance. So as mentioned, the antenna intersects with the coil on this end, and then on the other end of the coil goes to ground. So I've got ground interfacing with my wire going to the Bluetooth speaker. And, the gr and that also, that ground connects to the chassis of your variable capacitor. So those go, the ground that I have in my apartment is right there, <laughs> a screw in between the wall outlet. And that works decent enough. I do get some hum though, however, it's better to, it's best to use an earth ground if possible, or I've read a cold water pipe. You've got to wrap that uh, bare end of the ground wire and then tighten it around that screw and then tighten the screw back in. You want to really make sure you don't poke any of those holes in the um, wall outlet lest you get electrocuted. Also, I've turned off... Um, any power supplies nearby, like this guy, you know, I just turn that off because I noticed that reduces some hum. Just any, anything electrical in the way is it turned off is going to help your performance of the crystal radio. In most designs, interestingly, though, I've noticed that the variable capacitor um, is, is often connected to, say, the junction of the antenna, where the antenna and the inductor coil meet. This orange wire in most um, instructions will intersect right here. But I've, I've have gotten best performance with the variable capacitor connection to the tap where the germanium diode is, going to the same tap. And then you want the uh, positive or the anode end of the diode interfacing with the tap and the cathode or negative end of the diode. And you can see that by the black mark, that's negative. Um, you want that going out because a diode is a one-way electric valve. And again, with the low voltage coming in from the antenna, that's why we want the low forward voltage rating of 0.26, 0.27 volts. Again, this uh, 0A47 diode, I was just me measuring it before this video. You can measure that on a uh, multimeter, and, and I'm getting about 0.36 volts. So slightly higher forward voltage. You really want to go lower is better. Lower forward voltage on the diodes is better with these germanium diodes. And I'm connecting that to the positive tip of the line going out to the powered speaker. When, once you begin to hear static coming through your headphones or the powered speaker, then you're on the right track. You know, just keep working at it. Go over your, make sure your taps are good. Make sure your ground connection's good. You know, make sure you've got a good, decent variable capacitor. In most crystal radio diagrams, you'll see um, a small value capacitor and about a 47K ohm resistor connecting to the positive and negative terminals of either your high impedance headphones or your powered speaker cable. However, I noticed no appreciable difference in using both of these or one or the other. As a matter of fact, I'm get, getting the cleanest signal from my diode just straight on through and just eliminating the resistor and capacitor. So, that's just my experience, but in every diagram I've seen, all the schematics, there is a resistor and capacitor between the positive and negative lead of your headphones or a powered speaker. Um, again, I'm, I'm actually noticing better performance, eliminating these, taking them off the table, and just getting that signal directly from the germanium diode, as you see here, into the positive tip of my powered speaker. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. And if you have any questions about getting your crystal radio set up and running, post your comments below and I'll respond. Have a great day.